Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you are well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more relationship stories. And if you do love a Reddit story, why not consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. But let's crack on with today's first story. Now, today's first story comes from Cosmic Moose. There is a warning before the story about a dog being injured but does recover. So if you do want to skip the story, please feel free to do so. Timestamps are always down in the description and in the timeline below. And let's crack on with it. So the title of this is, Can I Just Shame My Own Maid of Honor for a Minute? And it starts off with a text exchange that was transcribed. And it says, Maid of Honor says, So I basically need to be there Thursday night. OP says, yep. Or is it all just Friday night? OP responds, then you can help decorate on Friday with the rest of us crazies. OP continues, Friday afternoon slash evening kind of thing, I think. Maid of Honor responds, yeah, but I hate your entire wedding party, with a laughing emoji. OP responds saying, yeah, but you just have to be nice. Maid of Honor responds, I hope you realize I don't do speeches. No public speaking from me is happening. OP says, so I'll get this person to do one then. She's the MC anyway, so. Maid of Honor replies, gross. OP says, you don't hate my whole party. You haven't met this person yet. Maid of Honor says, she's related to your boyfriend, so I don't hold much faith there. OP responds saying, do you even want to be a part of this? You already said you hate the rest of the party, and it sounds like you're determined to have a bad time. Maid of Honor says, nope, that's not how it is. I'm just reiterating that I won't pretend to like people that I don't, but it's not going to be an issue on my part. Just don't expect me to be fake about it and pretend to like anyone. She continues, just so you can't give me shit later for the hundredth time about having to be nice. I'm not rude to people I don't like, unless they give me a reason. I'm just not going to be fake buddy buddy with them. OP responds saying, well, you're not going to be there to support anyone else. You're the maid of honor because you're one of my best friends. But sometimes you made me feel like being a maid of honor is a big chore for you. And if that's how you feel, I don't want to put you through something that you'll hate. Because I want you to have a good time as possible. She responds, Obviously, that's not intentional, but maybe that's just how you perceived it. That's exactly the point I'm trying to make. I'm going for you and you alone. Not to play fake friends with anyone else. But the time of year is a legitimate concern. That's why I wanted to know exactly when I have to be there by and when I can leave. When it was September, there wasn't a big of and the post cuts off. And Maid of Honor replies with another one saying, I don't like fiance. You know that. I doubt I ever will. And we're going to just have to live with that with a shrugging hands emoji. It just sucks and I wish I could, but he's just the type of person that I can't stand, so I'm not going to pretend. Obviously, I'm not going to make an issue about it. It just is what it is. OP then carries on with her post and says, my best friend and I have been best friends since high school, like 13 plus years. We made this pact that we'd be each other's maid of honor one day. Fast forward to Christmas 2022, when I got engaged. I just assumed she'd be happy and excited and happy to be maid of honor. But after I brought up our childish old pact, she said to me, you know, I do have other friends I could ask to be my maid of honor. That should have been my first clue. A couple of days ago, we were talking about the wedding, which is now in six months. And she was asking me when she had to be there. It's in the next province over, so she has to make plans, which I totally understand. So we were talking about that until she started to shit on the rest of the party and my fiance. She's never made any effort to get to know my fiance who has always been nothing but kind to her. She's always just been rude to him every time she sees him and ignored him any other time. And I'll also add that she's dating a guy who hit my dog with his truck and then defended him saying my dog was chasing him. Her original story when it happened back in 2018 was that he was driving too fast. But now that if I bring it up, she says he was driving slow enough. I lived with her on her farm at that point in time. But I've still made the effort to get to know her guy, and he feels bad for what happened, so I've forgiven him. But she will still refuse to actually get to know my fiancé. Just also adding that my dog is okay. He was just sore for a while. So now I'm just so, so upset. I feel so many things. I feel like I've been allowing her toxic behavior to just roll off my back for far too long, and now she wouldn't expect me to fight back. Drama is the last thing I want at our wedding, but I feel like if I let her be a part of it, then that's super disrespectful to my fiancé and other friends who actually support us. It just really hurts. I was at the end of this one and I was like, how's this one of your best friends? How's this person you want as your maid of honor at your wedding? You know, she doesn't like any of your friends. She doesn't like your fiancé. She's going to be miserable as bloody hell the whole day. So just why? 
And it just gave me the feel that she's going to turn up to this thing, be miserable, create a scene just by being miserable. And then when you approach her and say, then why did you come? You go, she will just say to you, you know, that's how I am. But OP added some additional comments below that replied to some other people. So some people were laughing at the dwindling use of laughing face emojis. And OP says, it's been my way of coping with serious topics. I try to diffuse the tension with the laughing emoji. It's partially because she and I already normally talk to each other, but also because I'm autistic and have problems with emotions and I never want to come across too serious. So I add in emojis everything I type. Unfortunately, that also means I don't always know when not to use them. Another commenter says she is not your friend. Opie says I really should have known that when she wanted to go wedding dress shopping together. She said she wanted to fake her own engagement so she could try dresses on with me. Another commenter says, why does she hate your fiance slash this time of year BS? Opie says she's the kind of person who will judge someone else within the 30 seconds of meeting them. And if she doesn't like the kind of person they are, no matter how nice and awesome they are, she will just hate them forever for it. My fiance has always been so, so nice to her and she is always so rude and short tempered with him even though she's barely spent more than five minutes in the same room as him. The time of year thing, I'm honestly not sure. She's opening a bar with her boyfriend and probably thinks they'll be busy. Another commenter says, is your fiance abusive? Opie says, if my fiance is an abuser, then I'm a giraffe. He's literally the sweetest and kindest man ever. He's treated me like an absolute dream since we met. Another commenter says, anyone else have an issue with him? Opie says, just her. Everybody else loves him and says he's the sweetest. A bunch of people get downvoted for insulting OP and calling her a doormat. But she responds with, Because that's how we always talk with each other. Maybe I'm an idiot for being walked on, but I've been like that my whole life. Being raised in a doomsday cult didn't help. I was always told what to do and who to be. People always walked over me. I was also homeschooled, so I didn't know how to behave around people. I didn't know how to look for red flags or what red flags even were. I honestly thought this is just how friendships work and I suppose being autistic never helped either. It just made me more awkward and blind to seeing the manipulation. Sorry, I'm not automatically a strong person. I don't think I've been okay for a while, lol. I kind of felt like this wasn't how regular friends should be. And I've even had other people tell me she's not a good friend. But I just held on the past for too long. OP then updates the post and says, I'm not good at Reddit and... Don't know how to edit the actual post, but I fired her. I sent her a message saying her silence told me enough and it's best I found someone else to be my maid of honor. Then I told her I was done with her blatant disrespect of not only my friends, but of my future husband and I'm not putting up with it anymore. No answer back yet, but I pulled the plug. Her new maid of honor is responding. She's very excited and she's very proud of me for basically taking the trash out, lol. I've already took her out of my bridesmaids Facebook group and banned her from finding it again. OP shows the message to Maid of Honor kicking her out. She says, you know what? Your silence is enough of an answer. I think it's best if I find someone else to fill the role of Maid of Honor. You won't enjoy it at all and I'll be worried about you the whole time instead of enjoying one of the best days of my life. The fact that you so blatantly disrespected all of my other friends is complete bullshit and unacceptable. It's not fair to this person or the rest of the party and it's definitely not fair to me. You put me in a horrible position and I'm sick of it. I shouldn't have to play mediator on my wedding day because you don't feel like being nice to my people. Come as a guest if you like, but if you're so against my marriage and this person, then I think it's best you don't stand up there with us. The maid of honor's final response was, or the former maid of honor, you literally blew things out of proportion and made up scenarios in your head. Who cares if I don't like all your other friends? Do you think every person at every wedding likes each other? It's not an issue. You don't like some of my friends and I couldn't care less. It's literally not even an issue, but you made it into one. Since when do I cause public issues with people? If anything, I just don't make conversations with people. You make it sound so overdramatic, like I'm out to ruin your life, which is honestly hilarious and kind of hurtful by itself. And I've done nothing but support and try to help you for the last 10 years. But seriously, show me one time I ever said I was against your marriage. You came up with that. I don't love the way you guys did some things and I don't think he's the best match out there for you. But it has nothing to do with me, so who cares? It doesn't mean I don't support you. Jesus Christ. And OP's final thought says about that post then, you know what? When I finally heard back from her, she immediately tried to turn the tables and make me the bad guy. 
She blamed me for everything and yet not a single apology. Didn't even acknowledge that she hurt me at all. Show me one thing I ever said I was against your marriage. How about I don't like your fiance? Holy shit. And I totally understand that, you know, you're not going to get along with everyone. No one ever does. You go to weddings. There's some people there that you may not like, even in like the bridesmaids party or whatever. But I feel if you can't yourself be amicable in those situations, you should really take yourself out of it. Because this one certainly gave me vibes all the way through that something is going to come up. It's going to be about her in some way because she's going to be miserable throughout. Someone's going to pick up on it. Someone's going to say something. Then it's going to cause an argument. And then all she's going to say towards the end is, this is how I am. You know, I told you about that. I'm not going to put up with people or whatever. And then it'll be twisted all back on you again. Absolutely the right decision to replace that maid of honor, in my opinion. Doesn't seem, even really seem like a friend. They was talking about support and all this kind of thing, but it just doesn't feel like it in any way whatsoever. They don't feel like any love in those texts exchange or anything like that. But maybe that's just me. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know down in the comments below and let's move on to another story. And our next story is a bit of a different one. It's a bit about cooking, relationship and cooking together and, you know, absolute disaster by the sounds of it and i didn't think it'd be interesting at first but i was invested and this was from wine and mr bean who says i'm worried about this details in the comments so op posts a picture of like a, a slow cooker with some potatoes and a lump of meat in the middle and it all looks very plain and op says my husband decided he wanted to do a pot roast his way in the crock pot he put a whole unseasoned roast with who knows how many potatoes and filled it with water. Put it on high and says it needs 24 hours. It is not seasoned or seared or anything. Just potatoes, water and meat. What am I going to come home to from work tomorrow? Edit 1. The post is an hour old and hot roast on hour 3. I've just received breaking news from my husband. There is one single OXO beef cube in the water. This is an 8 litre crock pot. Lord have mercy on that little one bullion cube. The pot has a layer of white foam on top, which I imagine at this stage is just the starch from the tatties, right? But anyway, someone says, what's his reasoning? Opie says, this is the way he's always made it and it's his favorite. Someone says, you know what then? Okay, as long as your enjoyment isn't mandatory and he won't be offended if you fix yourself something you like and he should be allowed to make the roast. The absolutely bizarre way he likes it every now and then. Opie responds and he will want me to try it, but he will not insist I eat a full meal or anything. The last time I made chili to bring to a dinner party, I asked him to taste it and he said it was vile, too spicy, but he still tried it. So I will do the same. I will try it. Another commenter says, what a waste of perfectly good meat. Does he not understand seasoning or does he genuinely like bland food? Opie responds and I've gone into it in more depth on other replies, but he believes that excess seasoning isn't necessary and the flavor of the meat should stand alone another commenter says maybe your husband is trying to convince you that he should never be the one to cook again by the looks of it he's making a compelling argument for it opie says he has cooked for me before usually it's kind of bland but still edible this one is next level another commenter says no you can't if you fix this in any slightest way and put a positive spin on this train wreck he's going to break his arm patting his own back and he'll want to cook it again it must be a disaster the first time around, for the greater good of all mankind. Opie responds saying, I will not be altering his recipe in any way. Opie adds another picture sometime later. But for the podcast viewers who can't see this, all I can explain is like swamp water with a couple of potatoes and a lump of meat floating about. <laughs> there is no activity in that pot. It is still water. Opie says, this photo was taken at 8am. Pot roast was 14 hours old commenter asks why isn't it simmering there's no bubbles that is even on opie responds and husband made the executive decision after seven ish hours to turn it down to low <laughs> it was simmering at some point another commenter says and this is why the internet was invented i'm fully invested in seeing how this turns out now another commenter says i'm actually excited to go home and check on this science experiment i'm a bit worried he may realize the error of his ways and toss it before i get home from work someone says where did the potatoes go <laughs> Opie says, I think they're in heaven now, <laughs> but I assume they're at the bottom. I didn't stir it up. Oh, my bloody hell. Why is this so funny? My eyes are absolutely streaming. I shouldn't be laughing so much at this. 
So OP shares a picture of their final product. Again, for the podcast listeners, it's just something, you know, I, I don't see like carrots in there. Is that carrots? I think there's some carrots in there floating about. Uh, meat that's it's like shredding up. It's, it's, falling, it's all decaying in the pot. And I understand, you know, things go soft in these pots. They generally do, but holy moly. OP says this is the 24-hour mark. Carrots were added by him approximately four hours ago. Not boiling as lid was off for a few minutes. OP says it's now been 24 hours and here are the results. Husband has proclaimed this pot roast to be delicious. He's come back for seconds. Me? I ate a bite of all of it. The meat tastes obviously very bland and it's stringy and hard to chew. The potatoes are vile and I couldn't swallow the bite I took. The carrots were just carrot flavored mush. Zero out of 10, do not recommend. Additional info, apparently the 24 hour is how long it takes to cook. This is going to be sitting on warm until it's gone. I will not be consuming any more of it. It's only going to get worse. So someone comments on this one saying, no, this is the worst news and not what I expected. Is he being stubborn rather than letting you be right, lol? If he says no, he's not usually like that, lol. The fact he went back for seconds means he's being sincere. If he doesn't like something, he'll eat it anyway, but won't go back for more. Someone says, what was his reaction when you ate little to none of it? Did you explain that you disliked it? Opie says, I just said I'm sorry, but I just didn't like it. He said okay and asked if I wanted him to make me something else. Oh, he's a very kind man. Someone says, please share the recipe. Opie says, meat, potatoes, peeled and cut into chunks. One beef bullion cube, water. Put meat and potatoes in slow cooker, fill to the max with water, drop in the bullion, put the lid on, turn crock pot to high, walk away and ask the food god's forgiveness. And I should probably add to this at the end that people were questioning the pop tarts picture in the background of the and they said that they're americans that moved to the uk and whilst i was laughing about it the pictures coming up and the, and the progress reports on it and the way that op talked about it i thought the story was pretty sweet in some ways you know there's no divorces here there's no massive arguments about it she's letting him cook the food he wants to cook it she tried it didn't like it he said you know fair enough what can i make you something else but he's absolutely loving it at the same time. And I know many people, especially British friends, who love just meat and potatoes. Absolutely plain. They won't season that mother at all. But I really enjoyed that. You know, him absolutely loving the food he wants to cook and, you know, going back for seconds and not being offended that she didn't like it. Her accepting it that he likes it and that's what he wants to eat. And him even offering to cook as something else at the same time. I, I found that bit incredibly sweet. Maybe I'm just being a bit soppy there, but hey. But now I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this situation? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And let's move on to and one more story. And our next story comes from Dr. Chekhov, who says, Am I the a-hole for man spreading on a plane? A few months ago, I, 26 male, was alone on a long flight. Up to six hours. I had a middle seat between a young woman, 20s female, in the window seat and a woman, 30s female, on the aisle. I'm tall and I'm never comfortable on planes. My knees always dig into the seat in front and it can be quite painful. I usually try to take a walk around the airport before flights to stretch my legs, but neglected to this time. It was Spirit Airlines, so even less leg room than usual. About half an hour after takeoff, I found my left knee inching to the side for the sweet relief of open space specifically the no man's land in between seats, level with the shared armrest. But I wasn't paying attention to my knee the entire time. I'll concede it's possible that at some point I was occupying space that rightfully belonged to my window seat neighbor. All was well for up to two hours. At this point, the woman in the window seat called over the flight attendant. She asked her something like, could you tell him to keep his fucking leg in his own fucking seat? With horror. I understood she was talking about me. I instantly retracted my leg in deep shame. She added something about his enormous dick. My understanding was that it was meant to be a snide reference to the idea that spreading your leg is about male genital comfort. But she wasn't speaking clearly and the flight attendant, 50s female, didn't seem to understand her. The FA asked her some sort of clarifying question but she didn't answer and eventually the attendant went away. I had been shocked into silence but when the FA left I frantically began to apologize but she refused to speak to me. She acted like she didn't hear me. Instead, she started furiously texting on her phone. Yeah, texting during a flight. I thought that was weird too. 
Aisle seat woman said she had some extra space on her side I could use, but then promptly went to sleep. Oh well. I tried again to apologize to window seat woman, but again she ignored me. I went from embarrassed to confused. I kept replaying it in my head, wondering why she didn't simply ask me to move my knee instead of calling over the attendant. I started sneaking pics at her phone. My defense is that I was baffled by her behavior and wanted answers. I admit that I was being judgmental too. Here's why. She spent the last three hours of the flight watching TikToks about shaming obese people and texting someone called Pappy. I didn't see all of it, but a significant portion was definitely about me. She wrote, men really do be too much sometimes, with a laughing emoji. She ignored me the whole rest of the flight and I ignored her. I got a good but painful workout of whatever muscle it is that keeps your knees together. And we're going to start in the comments with Rai Lulu, who says you're the a-hole. One, this is a known reoccurring issue. You know you'll feel better with more leg space. Stop pinching pennies and pay for an aisle seat or an exit seat. There are options. Two, by wanting the woman to tell you if she's bothered by your invasion of her space, you make it her responsibility instead of just not doing it. Women can feel too vulnerable to confront a tall guy, your own admission by themselves, especially when they're stuck at the window seat and cannot exit if the guy gets angry. She didn't call the attendant to tell you to move. She called her to have an authority figure to help her make a point. Three, and then there is the snooping. Seriously, dude, you thought what? This woman has already found me intrusive before. Let's double down. Suki Sapphire says you're the a-hole. You knew you were in her space and hoped she'd say nothing and make herself smaller and uncomfortable so you'd feel better. She probably paid extra for the window seat so she could be comfortable and you felt entitled to occupy her space. I'm a super small girl who travels a lot and men do this to me all the time. I have to scrunch myself up in my seat so I'm not touching them. You could have asked if it was alright for you to spread out. I've had tall men ask me before and that super small gesture makes me feel so much better. I'm never going to say no. I've even switched seats. Yes, she handled it poorly and she might have been the asshole too, but you're the asshole. Downtown says you're the a-hole, pay for extra leg room. Having some random guy pressing his leg against me is enough to make me get up from my bus or train seat because it creeps me out. I don't like being touched and I make sure I always try to avoid it. You need to be mindful of those around you. And one more comment from Not a Bad Egg who says everyone sucks here. She absolutely could have just asked instead of, of calling over the flight attendant. But you were also taking up space that wasn't yours. All was well for up to two hours in your mind, not in hers. You were blissfully unaware of the situation, but for two hours she's putting up with you invading her space. There's probably a lot of side eye you missed during that time. Now, I'm going to turn this one to you guys. What do you guys make of this? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. And just a huge thank you from the bottom of my heart for getting involved in today's stories. Your love, your support, your time always means the absolute world to me. So thank you so, so much for being there, truly. And hopefully I will see you in the next one. Take care and much love.